The Todd Shapiro Show. Canada Laughs, Sirius XM 168. in this country joins us. How you doing, Bruce, from Canopy Growth? Well, I'm almost over the fact that you weren't at the front of the line. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was planning on coming down, but I heard actually there's some risk flying there, you cowboy. What, can you, oh, my God. Yeah, what happened yeah, this, there? Well, I think these hurricanes are really true things, and uh, they, the wind slowed down to like 90 kilometers an hour so we could land. And we went in a uh, charter with a bunch of journalists, and only two of them felt like throwing up, and I thought we're for sure going to throw up. But um, we got in about 10.30 last night, got the store. It looked amazing, and then the line started to form. And it went out the door, around the corner, down the whole block, around the corner, down towards the water. And uh, so we had um, a gentleman who'd been there from very early on in this crazy wind, and a young lady, and she was from... Uh, Labrador, and he's from Newfoundland, and he, you know he had a backstory and was pretty supportive of changing the way the world looked at cannabis for a bunch of reasons that mattered to him. And she was young enough; she couldn't believe why are people so weird about this and just ignoring it. And so it was a it was a great first sale. Uh, I like the fact that it was actually like Todd. I don't know when the last time some guy in a puffy jacket selling people weed actually gave them a receipt. Like, <laughs> um, so I was super excited about the receipt. So I actually kept the receipt. You got to frame that up and put it uh, at the headquarters. That's memorabilia. It's going in. Give me in a frame, and it, it, it was like twelve o'clock and five seconds. That's unbelievable. You, you, you know what you should do is actually put in like a print of it on a T-shirt and sell it like a tweed shirt or something. Oh, that's that a really, amazing, yeah, yeah, really awesome stuff, man. It's it's, you yeah, know, it's, every time I come on this show, I come up with good ideas. Yeah, well, you're a brilliant <laughs> guy, Bruce. I mean, you, you've taken cannabis growth to pretty <laughs> legendary places. I, I got to get serious for a moment because I think everyone's sort of understanding how this is all rolling out and stuff. I want to get in the head of Bruce Linton for a second. Just the story of when you started to where it got to to last night or I guess early in the morning. To, and, and what's going on today. I mean, I don't think a lot of people can understand sort of the path you've been through. Can, can you just sort of like let us know how you started all this and, and, and in your wildest dreams, did you imagine it would be right now where it is? Uh, so I didn't imagine it'd be right where it is, but I kind of thought uh, on a serious level, there was massive demand for cannabis if you could actually produce it properly, tell people it was actually not adulterated with sprays, and then if you could do research and turn it into real medical outcomes rather than anecdotal, and then you could use that research to make it into way better formats for a party, all that stuff we kind of at the beginning thought about and talked about and then bought a big Hershey factory that was empty. And I promised the town of Smith Falls if they said yes to me buying their biggest building and growing marijuana in it, that I would try to hire at least 150 people. And so now we're up to across the country and around the world in the last five and a half years, about 2,000 people. And so we're in 11 countries. Uh, we're in sort of nine or so different buildings across the provinces. And today we had product in every corner of our country, including the territory and all the provinces. And I would suggest that most of the journalists, you know, they like to find the problem. And so many of my interviews today are, so do you think there's going to be a shortage? And I have been answering yes, and we should blame the customers. Because for some reason, after about 90 years of prohibition, they are buying the hell out of the product. <laughs> um, so I, I, no, one could, no one seemed to like, what do you expect? Of course there's going to be a shortage, right? Like, it, I don't know if you've been watching it, but they've been on – like the Ontario Cannabis Store and some of the ones in Alberta, like they're talking about hundreds of orders in minutes. And the effect of that is 
no matter what you had there, it's going to go out. And probably the only headache is some guy at the post office decide maybe we should ask for more and try and have a strike maybe. And I'm like, couldn't you guys just do that like a day from now? Um, <laughs> right. it's one of the, you know, it's like, you know, really probably the reason half of you have a job now is because this cannabis thing's caught on. And, uh, you know, it's it's actually driving a lot of business for the post office. But, yeah, so here we are all of a sudden. We've got Constellation, the guys that make all the Corona and sell it all through the U.S. and Mondavi and those sorts of things that, like a year ago, was a big deal. Remember, Todd, when they, they said, we'd like to give you $245 million for nine, almost 10% of your company. And then about two months ago, they said, we'd like to give you $5 billion for two and a half times that much. And if we really like it, we'll give you another $5 billion for about 11% of the company. And we want it to be rocket fuel so that this Canadian company goes and kind of takes and leads the world. Hey, Bruce, it's Peter Anthony here. We we had the pleasure of meeting at Tweed Shindig. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which was an, an amazing time. Which one time. were you? There was a couple of you yeah, guys I was hanging out in my beer tent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also here. I was, I'm Mike Rita. I was also hanging out in Mike, the beer tent Mike, that, that day as well. Mike performed. Uh, we're, we're obviously big supporters, and uh, you, you mentioned the orders today. I was actually order. I ordered uh, off Ontario Cannabis Store website. Mm-hmm. I was order at 10.45 a.m., order number 56,000 or something like that, which is yeah, absolutely, right. absolutely wild. But you mentioned the, the speed at which... Uh, the industry grew in Canada. Do you see that uh, being replicated across the globe? Like, do you see this thing just accelerating uh, the same way we saw it here domestically? Um, So we've been at it in Canada since 2001 because some persistent people won court decisions and got rights to have it. And the rest of the world's, you know, at least 15 years behind us. But because of what we've learned, we can take them along faster. So I think uh, over the next five years, it will become really unusual if one of the big countries called the G20 or the G10 uh, continues to ignore cannabis. Because really what you're doing, if you're not regulating it and educating on it, what you're doing is ignoring it. And if you ignore it, um, that's really good for like people who are in the illegal business, but that's not really good for society. And so I think when Canada comes back to work tomorrow and we kind of invent a bunch of stuff and become a pretty great world leader at this, It'll actually seem like the right thing to do, and Germany's well down that path already. Um, So then that'll get medical going. And then the question will be, well, who wants to have the next step of management and which countries actually need the jobs? And so, you know, if you were running Greece, uh, you would probably want to become the first country in Europe that did both because tourism is a huge part of their economy. And if people have a choice to have cannabis and corona, guess what? They're going to show up more often and stay longer. I, I will book my ticket tomorrow. Yeah, yeah I mean, Greece. I used to just go for the feta cheese. But I mean, what another <laughs> great bonus, um, Bruce. You, you. I saw Canopy Growth made a, a couple of sort of small plays within the United States, and and I mean, have you? And then you talked about on on Kramer about uh, sort of some some testing that you get done with the DEA. I mean, that blew me away. Yeah. The Drug Enforcement Agency sort of working with Canopy Growth in terms of, I guess, just testing. Is that to is that to find out sort of you know that that a drug that they might have banned and always had a stigma for actually can be looked at, kind of like people look at an Advil, where it's consistent, it's it's a regular you know formula every day, and and people don't have to be fearful of it. Is that part of that? So it's, there, there's a couple of things. So the DEA thing, um, over the last couple of years, uh, we've been getting all kinds of certifications for how we do things that meet international standards of pharmaceutical. And it's called GMP, Good Manufacturing Practice. And so about a week ago, we put out a press release to say that we had become the first and, to our knowledge, only company to ship cannabis to America under the approval of the DEA, which is the drug enforcement entity. And that was a pretty good indication that we follow the rules. Uh, Monday, we announced that we had acquired the intellectual property of a group that originated in cannabis in Colorado. And what they did was try to figure out how cannabis can be created in a way that it goes to a drink. And they figured out and worked on how do we make genetics focus on, if you really want THC, why does the plant not just produce all THC? And so uh, these guys have been at it for about six years and have done great work. And so we thought, we'll buy their intellectual property, move it all to Canada, and do all the research here and keep it going. And so those two things... You know, it's just about it's just about accelerating and covering everything. When you know where you want to go, it doesn't feel uh, uncomfortable to try and go there really quickly. So, I guess my next question then, Bruce, when are you going to the White House to talk to Donald Trump, the special <laughs> counsel, about this <laughs> stuff? When's that happening? 
Hey, you know what? What I try to do mainly is meet with the regulators. So, like, if I got a choice to have uh, meet with, you know, Angela Merkel or to have the head of the cannabis licensing agency for Germany, you know who I want to hang out with. And so it goes the same for every country because a lot of these places aren't ready to u- move yet on political will, but they're ready to let the regulators move along in sort of a quiet get together the regs, put together the plans. And so when we work with those folks, it turns out a lot like Canada. It just happens to get written in Spanish or, you know, Czech or something. When it comes to the states, so, and, and, you know, the next sort of election already starts to go now with the the primaries and stuff, is there going going to be a race to which party does embrace this stuff just to get voter approval, do do you think? It's, It's a weird thing, right? Like, if the Republicans made it easy for Colorado, will they get a single vote more? Or will they lose votes in another jurisdiction that doesn't like California? And if they did regulate it, are they going to make it all across the country? Or are they going to make it so that the states that said it's okay, then it's federally okay? But then the cannabis won't be allowed to move around. They'll all be like little countries because they won't say, well, we're Colorado. Please bring us all the cannabis and let us fire all the people who work here now. And so um, the net net of the whole thing is I think it's really complicated. And uh, if and when they do something, it might be hemp, it might be state by state, but at maximum, it's going to continue to be complicated, and that's good for us because it means we can keep running fast, and there isn't a really well-structured U.S. opportunity to come and chase us. Is the is the biggest barrier? I'm just curious, like from your perspective, is the biggest barrier the education component, or or is it the political component, or do, or do those go um, hand in hand? They kind of go hand in hand. Like my three competitors are public perception. You know, what do they think of this? Because, you know, in Japan, it's still very, very way offside versus, say, Germany. Public policy, because if they get it wrong, you can't make a business with just horrible rules. And then the illicit market. And so they keep spiraling against each other because the perception of the public changes as they see the illicit market come forward. And so we spend a lot of time just cycling through those three. And it's different at different stages in each country. Like in England, in July, they kind of woke up that they couldn't actually make a sick young child continue to have seizures just because they didn't want to talk about cannabis, so they began talking about it. I'm telling you, when I was there in February, if I'd have told anybody in England that you're likely going to begin governing cannabis, they probably were like, chase me out of the country. And now that sparks a discussion. But once that starts, it's five years until they have a platform ready to run. We, we were joking around earlier on the program before you joined us, Bruce. And by the way, I know you got a million things to do, so if you ever yes. got to go, just let us know. But, I actually got, I got about one minute because i got people okay. tapping on my window saying, next stop, next that, stop. Fair <laughs> enough. You're a busy man, Bruce Lynn, Canopy Growth. Um, do, you, do, we, do you think you'll ever see or will ever see a Canadian politician or even Justin Trudeau himself smoke a joint <laughs> lot, just the way you would have a glass of wine now that it's legal? Do you yeah. think we'll, we'll see yeah. that soon? Yep. You will see that before the next election. Some people will put that stake in the ground and say, I'm here. Unbelievable. I love, I love it. Can't wait. Uh, can't wait. Bruce. You'll vote for him, too, won't you? <laughs> Whatever party. They got three votes right there. <laughs> yeah, Bruce, you're awesome, dude. I, uh, you're a rock star in the industry. You're so candid, so well-spoken, and uh, honestly, taking Canada and representing us so well across the globe. We okay, appreciate man. your time. Thanks, guys. Be good. Okay. Congrats, bro. Well, yeah, congrats, yeah, Bruce Lynn from Canada so Can Be Growth. What a beauty. Oh, man. What a rock beauty. star, you said it. He's a rock star. Yeah. The Todd Shapiro Show. You are the greatest hero in American history. Sirius XM, Canada Laughs, Channel 168.